and forgiven release. So your free will has been advised by your heart on what's the right thing to do with that thought, but it's still up to the free will to decide. Are you going to reject that angry thought or are you going to meditate on it? Well, if you make a decision with your, your free will to listen to the voice of your heart and you choose to reject that angry thought and you choose to forgive that person, what the heart does is it secretes a chemical called ANF, which just out of interest stands for atrial natriuretic factor. But ANF is basically the hormone in your body that carries the emotion of peace and it calms your whole body down and it makes you feel at peace. It's a chemical that's very good for you. It motivates you, it helps your brain to function more efficiently, and it produces health in our bodies. And basically, when our heart is at peace, we are at peace. But if, on the other hand, you make a decision with your free will not to listen to the voice of your heart, and you decide that you are not willing to forgive, and you choose instead to meditate on those angry thoughts, well, first of all, what happens is the heart doesn't produce that peace chemical ANF. Instead, what the heart does is it causes an imbalance in your whole body chemistry where all the organs in your body go into a poisonous state of dis-ease, which will eventually lead to a disease. You see, one thing that I realized through studying all of this is, my goodness me, obedience to God is not something to be taken lightly. Because when we choose to ignore the quiet promptings of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, it has serious adverse effects on our health. Where your whole body goes out of rhythm and into a poisonous state of stress. You see, your heart is not just a physical pump that pumps blood. It's what they call the body's strongest oscillator. What that means is that the heart has the ability to pull every organ system of the body into its own rhythm. And that rhythm can be peace or stress. Peace means health, stress means dis-ease, and eventually disease. Okay, with that background on the brain and the heart brain, let's go to, to the Word of God and have a look at 3 John verse 2, which says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Now with the knowledge that we now have about the brain, let's unpack some revelation from the scripture. In a biblical context, your soul consists of your mind, your free will, and your emotions. Now earlier in our teaching on the brain, I just showed you that your mind is physically in your brain. Your mind consists of your thoughts, and your thoughts, thoughts exist physically in your brain in the form of an electric current. You also know that your free will is physically in your brain. Your free will is physically a part of your mind. I don't have a lot of time to talk about emotions in depth, but your emotions is basically a product of your thoughts. If your thoughts are positive and godly, you're going to have positive and godly emotions. For example, you're going to feel love, joy, peace, and so on. Or if your thoughts are negative, your emotions are going to be the same. For example, you're going to feel anger, hate, fear, anxiety, and so on. Now, your emotions exist physically in your body in the form of chemicals which they call information emotion molecules. The information part is because those chemicals carry a photocopy of the memory that you built in your brain, and then they also carry the emotion that was produced in response to your thoughts. And these um, information emotion molecules then flow through your bloodstream and throughout your whole body, and what they do is they bind to receptors on the surface of your body cells, and that's how you physically feel an emotional reaction such as love or peace or fear or anger, for example. Now these